What was that sitcom? Sanford and Son. That, there we go. There we go. You like my harmonica? That was... You're wonderful. That was wonderful. Uh, so, we, the, the Bills drafted a couple of interesting prospects. Yeah. They got yeah. a linebacker. Mm-hmm. Not a strong side linebacker. Right? No. No, he no. is a tailor-made will. Yep. But they already have a will, don't they? Yep. Hmm. I know. So, the Voshan hmm. Joseph pick... It is fascinating. And again, we may not see a lot of Voshan Joseph if he even makes the team. Don't know, right? Can't say that we know. Raw would be an understatement for this kid. Right. However, we didn't see Milano till week eight. Week ten. Yeah. Right? So we're not gonna see Voshan Joseph for a while. No. Uh well. Mm. <laughs> If you like what you see so far, hit that bell for more. You don't talk like that. I don't. The Joseph pick is intriguing. I think it's made because you already had Oliver, and we're gonna be we're gonna be banging this drum a lot. I have a feeling we're gonna be banging this drum a lot, and I, it's gonna be it's gonna be very tough to get me off of this train. And the fact that the Bills may a lot of times mm-hmm. only go with Edmonds and Milano and a four-man front and five defensive backs. Right. Given how this team is shaping up. Yeah. Now, that doesn't mean that all five of the defensive backs have to be defensive backs. Mm-hmm. Um, if they want to put on early downs, let's just say, for example, you want to put you want to put uh, Edmonds at Sam, Milano at Mike, mm-hmm. and Vosin at Will, and you want to blitz him just for the sheer fact, because the kid can blitz. Yeah. Kid's an animal. Yeah. He's tall and lanky. What do we know yeah. about that? Mm-hmm. I mean, the Edmonds is the same mold. Well, I mean, and you're not going to have him quarterback in the middle of the defense. No, no, okay, no, no, that's all I'm saying. Yeah, I mean, Milano and Edmonds on strong side or in uh, on the inside are interchangeable in my opinion, mm-hmm. right? Um, depending on the sets, right? That's, yeah. they're interchangeable. I, the one thing that that Edmonds is really good at is pass rush, and that's one thing that the Bills don't do a lot of is pass rushing up the middle. But my question to you is, are they going to now that those gaps are going to be wide open? In the middle? Well, yeah, because you're looking at getting getting home with four. So can you blitz up the middle now? Because they did they did blitz up the middle in weeks three, four, would, five because Edmonds kept getting caught up in that in the play action. So they started yeah. blitzing him a lot. But now that you've got these animals across the front four, does that open up does that open up Edmonds to blitz? And does that give Joseph an opportunity to to try and cover some people? Kids fast. He can. He can cover. He can close. Mm-hmm. He's got some he's got some quickness to him. Uh, the thing about it, Joseph is the fact is to go to your point. We talk about I mean the the space between the center and the guard is the A gap, guard and tackle is the B gap, mm-hmm. and so on. You know what I mean? Uh, so you have the option of blitzing off the corner, like uh, like to have an Edmonds line up next to Hughes, and they yeah. both come off of that corner. Yeah. Or which you've tried before, Edmonds going through the A gap, running right next to Star, yeah. and he gets caught up in the wash. So what right. you're saying is that. Does it open up that opportunity? I agree and disagree. I think it opens it up, but I think it opens it up to C gap. Okay. Because now you're going to have Hughes going wide. Right. Star beating up two guys in the middle, and Oliver, they have to try to adjust to that. Mm-hmm. And then you can bring the Will or Joseph or Milano or Edmonds inside between Hughes and Star. See, that's where Joseph lacks, though, is he, his field vision isn't awesome, right? So... If you look at his, if you if you watch him, there's some plays where he is the best player on that defense, and there's some plays where he is he has lost, no middle ground. You're right, lost, yeah. lost, lost. Yeah. So uh, the move you're you're absolutely right. Moving him to Will should make life a little bit easier because he's going to get to see the play break down. He's going to get to he's going to get to follow the football a little bit more. He needs some help with that, so he's going to get to follow the football a little bit more. But he's really upright when he goes through the line. He doesn't have you know. He's really. He's not. 
he's not very wide, so he kind of gets pushed around a little bit. Mm -hmm. So he's I so think, lanky. right? I, what I'm saying is that if you're depending on the double team inside, teams are going to know that they can bounce the star double team out. The guard can bounce out and try and get a hand on Joseph coming up the C gap, and he could get him. If it's delayed, they can't do it though. Right. What's all, well, well, all I'm saying is that say you lined up in a classic four three. Right. You got Hughes, Star, Oliver, and Lawson. Mm -hmm. And on your linebackers, strengths to the left. Mm -hmm. So you got Milano, Edmonds, and uh, Joseph. Just yeah. to say, it, we're just spitballing here. Right. It's one of those things. So what you want to do is, um, you want to do a delayed blitz with the Mike and the Will mm -hmm. crossing. Okay. So what you do is, you have your four run up front. You have... Edmonds go wide of Hughes. Right. All right. If he goes wide of Hughes, they're going to make a call that it's going to kick out the tackle. The guard's going to take. Um, Hughes. Guard's going to take a uh, Hughes because mm -hmm. you got the tackle taking um, Edmonds coming around the end. Right. And now he's free to come up because you got you got Star taking on everyone else. Right. So what are you going to do? How are you going to do? If you want to overload the weak side. That's the quarterback's backside. Like, mm -hmm. Most of the, most more than likely, and you got Milano over there in the flat, right, along with White. So, if you want to try to cut half the field off, that's one of those things you can do. And then you got Hyde and Poyer dropping down in the box to sure. cover the middle of the field because it just got vacated by Edmonds. So sure. it's always you. What it does is you open up options. Now, could you put anybody there? Yeah. Yeah, I understand that. Yeah. Joseph to me is is a manifestation of what happened last year when Milano went out and they had to play more nickel. And when they had to have somebody in the box, they dropped Hyde and Poirier. Right. Which brings us to our other draft pick. Right. I, I don't know if Raphael Bush might be here anymore because of that draft pick. Yeah. I know it's a fifth rounder, but... Well, it, you look at the season that Raphael Bush put up, I mean, you'd be shocked how many tackles he had. Yeah, that's why I, I, he's, he's 31. I wouldn't get rid of him. I'm just saying, because of the position they drafted, Mm -hmm. This guy was a very vocal leader and a captain on the team. So if you're just trying to get younger and trying to get guys in, like like a Dean Marlowe or um, Jaquan Johnson, mm -hmm. I mean, that's those are a couple of scenarios that I thought of. I, right when they made the pick, I'm like, okay, they got a linebacker who's a tailor-made will. Mm -hmm. All right. Do they not – was was the grind too much in Hyde and Poyer after Milano went out dropping down in the box playing the run? Where they want to bring this young kid in, right? They they also draft a safety. Mm -hmm. Well, we said that they couldn't, they didn't have to draft a safety, but they could have to right. play in the nickel sets. Right. He's a nickel set guy. Oh, big time. Runs yeah. a four seven though. You're not listen. You're not asking him to. You're not asking him to run down people. No, you're not. You're asking him to stay in the box and you're asking him to play dirty. That's what you want. Torpedo. You think it's exactly right. Okay. That's exactly what you're asking him to do. You're not asking him to do too much, right? It's you're you want him to take over that middle and clean up anything that gets through that line. That's what you that's what you want him to do. And he's going to be perfectly fit for that. Perfect. Jaquan Johnson's going to be perfectly fit for that job. But you you if you would ask me what linebacker, what the skill set of linebacker would be, pass rush would not be it. I wouldn't say the Bills need a pass rushing linebacker. No. I wouldn't have said that. You have one, right? Yeah, you got a couple, honestly. I mean, <laughs> you, you, what do you, what do you? I mean, you're looking at Lorenzo Alexander, and he's. We are anticipating he's going to be in a lot of pass rush sets, right? But is this the transition plan? I believe it is, and because it seems like what they do is there's a lot of hybrids on the defense. Yeah. So what I mean by speed. that is that yeah, it's built for speed. You're sitting there going, okay. First and second down, if we're going to rotate certain guys, we're going to put Alexander at Sam. We're going to put Milano at Will. We're going to put uh, Edmonds in the middle. Mm -hmm. That's fine. First and second down, typical, maybe. Running mm -hmm. down, short passing downs. That's fine. So now on third down, when you want to rotate and you want to get Star out there, out of there, and you want to generate more of a pass rush, you drop Alexander down to defensive tackle. Right. You bring in Harrison Phillips. Mm -hmm. Um if that's your rotation, I'm, I'm, right. I'm getting a little ahead of myself. But in that respect, you say, okay, we're going to go nickel. He drops down. We bought Milano and, and Edmonds covering. Yep. That's the way it works. Or what do you do? You you got Hyde and Poyer working as hybrids. They're, they're coming up playing Will mm -hmm. sometimes on some of them fronts. 
the great thing that the Bills have done is they have enough talent that these draft picks don't have to start. Like these guys no. who drafted in the fifth round and sixth round and seventh round, you drafted guys who could fill roles for you. Like you're going to ask Joseph to come in and be a pass rush specialist initially. That's what you're going to do. You're going to bring him in in sets and say, go get the quarterback. Because that's the easiest transition plan for him. Mm -hmm. Is come in, go do what you know how to do. Go pass rush the quarterback. See what you can make happen. We'll put you at will. We'll keep it simple. Right? And then you earn your playing time. That's what you have to do on this team. You have to earn your playing time. Joseph's going to be the same. If you're going to see him at all, you're going to see him in nickel sets in situations that they know the outcome. They know what the other team's going to do. They're going to put him in situations to try and be effective. And then if he succeeds in those situations, then guess what? You'll get more playing time. You put a little more on his plate. Yeah. Right, exactly. So there's there's no immediate need to rush these guys to make them ready. You don't have to. You're not even... Normally, fifth, sixth, seventh rounders are guys that you're just throwing against the wall to see what sticks. And from a talent perspective, these guys do fill roles that the Bills have have in in you know in the deck, and, and they they still need filled. Mm -hmm. I know we're talking. I mean, we're spending a lot of time on two fifth round picks. However, right. Teller, Milano, yeah. Um, these are, these have been useful picks for yeah. this organization. <clears throat> yes, yes, and and you're never going to, you're never going to go wrong by having options. I think it was the, I think it was the Tennessee Titans game where Marlowe came in. Mm -hmm. Really, one of the only time he had significant action, and this guy was just throwing his body all over the whole. Oh field. yeah, and yeah, he didn't care. I mean, nope. he, he was outweighed by Henry by like forty pounds. He didn't care. Um, but that's that's what this system is. Like, okay, in that one game, he showed that he could still be effective on this team. Now, I don't think they drafted a safety to upgrade from him. Mm -hmm. I think they realized that the end may be in sight for Hyde and Poyer. Yeah. Because they got a couple more years left on their deals. Yep. But they're getting up there and, you know, you Poyer, gotta start Poyer had 100 tackles. You got to start dipping your toes in the safety water to see what's there. And Raphael Bush doesn't do that for you. No, no. He, yeah. he offers you a – that is a classic – down in Carolina, he was in he was in New Orleans. You know what that guy brings to the table. You didn't have to scout him. He listen, he can come in, he can play the run for us. He tried to play the pass a few times, wasn't very successful. So like, okay, maybe we need more pass coverage, safeties. Maybe we need more cornerbacks to come in and play safety. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't be surprised if Kevin Johnson was a guy that they came in in passing downs and put him at safety. Maybe, yeah. I mean, former first round pick. He's a former first round pick. So if you're worried about him getting hurt. Then only put him in certain situations where he's going to be covering the pass. Mm -hmm. Don't have him come up as as a run stopper. Right. Um, so I mean, there's a reason he was a first round pick, though. Mm -hmm. All it all it does is give the Bills more options for their defense and, and looking at more guys and maybe putting maybe putting the heat on a couple of guys. You know right. I mean? Maybe it does. But again, you know, you look at what kind of position are the Bills going to even put these guys in in the preseason? They might not get a ton of playing time. And then they become practice squad eligible because they're fifth round picks. Exactly. Fifth round picks get cut every year and end up on the practice squad. And you're you're making no commitment to them from a contract standpoint. It's a four year guaranteed contract, but you're gonna waive that to put them on the practice squad. So what? Yeah. You drafted you drafted guys that are knowingly flawed, right? Yeah. And if a team wants to bring them on, they have to put them on their fifty three. Yeah. So that's what happens when. You get these rosters that are 90, it's a wave of players that are through waivers now. Yes. There's there's a hundred plus what players on waivers. You know, what do we do? We, if we're gonna have to cut somebody that's already on our team to pick up this kid. Is that what we wanna do? Are we comfortable doing that? And I, I like Joseph, I do. I like him as a player, big time flaws, not awesome instincts, loses the football, gets caught up in the wash, Right? Hence the fifth rounder. Has to play well. It. Got he has to play well. You look at Jaquan, you know Johnson. Thank you. I was gonna say Joseph, but I was like, I just said Joseph. There's a lot of J's in there. There's a lot of J's. Um, you look at Jaquan Johnson, and again, he fits the role of a nickel safety, or yes. nickel linebacker. Yes. And but a lot of teams are interested in that right now. Yeah. But you gotta make a commitment to him filling that role, a rookie coming in and, and filling that role if he's put on waivers. Jaquan Johnson is a very big candidate to me to be waived okay. right after preseason. Put him on the practice squad. You roll into the season with what you got. And then... A la Marlowe? Uh, yeah, Dean Marlowe or Raphael Bush, right? And then yeah. something happens or you just want to transition away from either of those two players. You bring them up after you give them five, six, seven weeks on the practice squad. You go from there. I disagree with you on this point. 
I think it's going to be switched. Okay. I think you wave Joseph instead. Because he's the more flawed player? Yes, because okay. he, he's more raw. I mean, that nickel linebacker role is a really, really important the role big, on, The big on nickel. All these teams. The big nickel. What separates Johnson from Joseph is the fact of his leadership, leadership qualities that he has. The guy is just, an, you know, he's, he's, he's all emotion. And, um, I mean, that's, that's aside from his athletic ability. I mean, the, he's more quick than fast. Okay, that's what you want in the box. You're not right. going to be running all the way down the field with the guy. It's, right. it's not, it's, he's a little smaller to cover up the cover of the tight ends. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm talking from a physical a physicality standpoint. But here's here's the thing that's big about it. They, this coaching staff, we have always made the point that they think they can coach anybody up. Yep. There's a reason these guys were drafted and not undrafted free agents. Mm-hmm. You want four years with these guys. Right. Now, if you get two more years with Joseph, you get two more years with um, Johnson. Who knows what they are in two more years? Right. And then, what are they doing? Then they're playing on a contract year. Well, and they're trying to be animals, and they're trying to come in. If you get them into their system quicker, there's a, that I'm saying is that's what separates for me. And you got all these restricted free agents coming up next year. Why wave them, put them on the practice squad, mm-hmm. and then have that as well? Right. So I think it's more likely that they wave a. Um, I think they wave a line a linebacker. Mm-hmm. Than a safety, and perhaps, and perhaps you're right, you know. But I, the one thing I will say about Joseph that I, I, I think might support that is um, here's a guy that at the end of his senior season got disciplined for not meeting the Gator standard. You know how hard you have to work to not meet the Gator standard. Is I've got very little respect for the Florida, for the Florida Gators. I know you're a Florida team. State fan. I got very little respect for Florida Gator football team. So that that might be a little bit my bias coming in, but um, <laughs> I think I think the difference here is Joseph was best athlete available, and I really do believe that at some point the Bills just looked at let's get the best athlete, let's get him in here, we'll figure it out. Well, yeah, the, the, right. The, the, their but pick, their and was... Johnson was not the best athlete available. He was the best player position available. Right, they looked at the board and said, "Okay, well, let's get a safety. I think we need him. We like this kid. You know, he brings a lot to the table off the field. So let let's let's bring him in, right? But the Bills had a nice opportunity to go out and get the best athlete available, and then also get who they felt was the most coachable, right? And they they walked this draft through a balance of that, mm-hmm. where it was, let's go get the freak athlete. Let's see if we can do anything with him. If we can't, that's okay." We got enough picks. Not worried about it. Not worried about it. Yeah, I'm drafting eight. I'm surprised. That was a lot more than I thought. The optimistic version of me is is saying, hey, you got a big nickel and you got a will linebacker. Mm -hmm. Two things you needed. Great. You got them in the fifth round. They're fifth rounders for a reason. They're both raw. Right. One runs a Mm 4-7. One had mine combine numbers. (laughs) When I was when I was six four two fifteen, that's what Johnson's combine numbers are. Mine, mm-hmm. except uh, I don't have thirty two inch arms. No, but no. That being said, it's it's it, it definitely brings up an intriguing. The positions they decided to draft in the fifth round are very intriguing for the scope of how this team is going to go into the offseason. Absolutely, but I think it's also important to remember the fact that McDermott doesn't play rookies. No, unless they're first round players. They're not playing. They're first rounders, second rounders can get on. He the didn't field. want to play Allen last year. No, he didn't. You're absolutely right. He didn't. 